the mysterious card by cleveland moffat richard burwell of new york will never cease to regret that the french language was not made a part of his education this is why on the second evening after burwell arrived in paris feeling lonely without his wife and daughter who were still visiting a friend in london his mind naturally turned to the theatre so after consulting the daily amusement calendar he decided to visit the folie bergere which he had heard of as one of the notable sights during an intermission he went into the beautiful garden where gay crowds were strolling among the flowers and lights and fountains he had just seated himself at a little three-legged table with a view to enjoying the novel scene when his attention was attracted by a lovely woman gowned strikingly though in perfect taste who passed near him leaning on the arm of a gentleman the only thing that he noticed about this gentleman was that he wore eyeglasses now burwell had never posed as a captivator of the fair sex and could scarcely credit his eyes when the lady left at the side of her escort and turning back as if she had forgotten something passed close by him and deftly placed a card on his table the card bore some french words written in purple ink but not knowing that language he was unable to make out their meaning the lady paid no further heed to him but rejoining the gentleman with the eyeglasses swept out of the place with the grace and dignity of a princess burwell remained staring at the card needless to say he thought no more of the performance of the other attractions about him everything seemed flat and tawdry compared with the radiant vision that had appeared and disappeared so mysteriously his one desire now was to discover the meaning of the words written on the card calling a fiacre he drove to the hotel continental where he was staying proceeding directly to the office and taking the manager aside burwell asked if he would be kind enough to translate a few words of french into english there were no more than twenty words in all why certainly said the manager with french politeness and cast his eyes over the card as he read his face grew rigid with astonishment and looking at his questioner sharply he exclaimed where did you get this monsieur burwell started to explain but was interrupted by that would do that would do you must leave the hotel what do you mean asked the man from new york in amazement you must leave the hotel now to-night without fail commanded the manager excitedly now it was burwell's turn to grow angry and he declared heatedly that if he wasn't wanted in this hotel there were plenty of others in paris where he would be welcome and with an assumption of dignity but piqued at heart he settled his bill sent for his belongings and drove up the rue de la paix to the hotel bellevue where he spent the night the next morning he met the proprietor who seemed to be a good fellow and being inclined now to view the incident of the previous evening from its ridiculous side burwell explained what had befallen him and was pleased to find a sympathetic listener why the man was a fool declared the proprietor let me see the card i will tell you what it means but as he read his face and manner changed instantly this is a serious matter he said sternly now i understand why my confrere refused to entertain you i regret monsieur but i shall be obliged to do as he did what do you mean simply that you cannot remain here with that he turned on his heel and the indignant guest could not prevail upon him to give any explanation we'll see about this said burwell thoroughly angered it was now nearly noon 
and the new yorker remembered an engagement to lunch with a friend from boston who with his family was stopping at the hotel de la alma with his luggage on the carriage he ordered the cocher to drive directly there determined to take counsel with his countrymen before selecting new quarters his friend was highly indignant when he heard the story a fact that gave burwell no little comfort knowing as he did that the man was accustomed to foreign ways from long residence abroad it is some silly mistake my dear fellow i wouldn't pay any attention to it just have your luggage taken down and stay here it's a nice home-like place and it will be very jolly all being together but first let me prepare a little nerve settler for you after the two had lingered a moment over their manhattan cocktails burwell's friend excused himself to call the ladies he had proceeded only two or three steps when he turned and said let's see that mysterious card that has raised all this row he had scarcely withdrawn it from burwell's hand when he started back and exclaimed great god man do you mean to say this is simply then with a sudden movement of his hand to his head he left the room he was gone perhaps five minutes and when he returned his face was white i'm awfully sorry he said nervously but the ladies tell me they that is my wife she has a frightful headache you will have to excuse us from the lunch instantly realizing that this was only a flimsy pretense and deeply hurt by his friend's behavior the mystified man arose at once and left without another word he was now determined to solve this mystery at any cost what could be the meaning of the words on that infernal piece of pasteboard profiting by his humiliating experiences he took good care not to show the card to any one at the hotel where he now established himself a comfortable little place near the grand opera house oh through the afternoon he thought of nothing but the card and turned over in his mind various ways of learning its meaning without getting himself into further trouble that evening he went again to the folie bergere in the hope of finding the mysterious woman for he was now more than ever anxious to discover who she was it even occurred to him that she might be one of those beautiful nihilist conspirators or perhaps a russian spy such as he had read of in novels but he failed to find her either then or on the three subsequent evenings which he passed in the same place meanwhile the card was burning in his pocket like a hot coal he dreaded the thought of meeting any one that he knew while this horrible cloud hung over him he bought a french english dictionary and tried to pick out the meaning word by word but failed it was all greek to him for the first time in his life burwell regretted that he had not studied french at college after various vain attempts to either solve or forget the torturing riddle he saw no other course than to lay the problem before a detective agency he accordingly put his case in the hands of an agent de la sureté who was recommended by a competent and trustworthy man they had a talk together in a private room and of course burwell showed the card to his relief his adviser at least showed no sign of taking offence only he did not and would not explain what the words meant it is better he said that monsieur should not know the nature of this document for the present i will do myself the honour to call upon monsieur to-morrow at his hotel and then monsieur shall know everything then it is really serious asked the unfortunate man very serious was the answer the next twenty-four hours burwell passed in a fever of anxiety as his mind conjured up one fearful possibility after another he deeply regretted that he had not torn up the miserable card at the start he even seized it prepared to strip it into fragments and so end the whole affair 
and then his yankee stubbornness again asserted itself and he determined to see the thing out come what might after all he reasoned it is no crime for a man to pick up a card that a lady drops on his table crime or no crime however it looked very much as if he had committed some grave offence when the next day his detective drove up in a carriage accompanied by a uniformed official and requested the astounded american to accompany them to the police headquarters what for he asked it is only a formality said the detective and when burwell still protested the man in uniform remarked you'd better come quietly monsieur you will have to come anyway an hour later after severe cross-examination by another official who demanded many facts about the new yorker's age place of birth residence occupation etc the bewildered man found himself in the conciergerie prison why he was there or what was about to befall him burwell had no means of knowing but before the day was over he succeeded in having a message sent to the american legation where he demanded immediate protection as a citizen of the united states it was not until evening however that the secretary of legation a consequential person called at the prison there followed a stormy interview in which the prisoner used some strong language the french officers gesticulated violently and talked very fast and the secretary calmly listened to both sides said little and smoked a good cigar i will lay your case before the american minister he said as he rose to go and let you know the result to-morrow but this is an outrage do you mean to say before he could finish however the secretary with a strangely suspicious glance turned and left the room that night burwell slept in a cell the next morning he received another visit from the non-committal secretary who informed him that matters had been arranged and that he would be set at liberty forthwith i must tell you though he said that i have had great difficulty in accomplishing this and your liberty is granted only on condition that you leave the country within twenty-four hours and never under any conditions return burwell stormed raged and pleaded but it availed nothing the secretary was inexorable and yet he positively refused to throw any light upon the causes of this monstrous injustice here's your card he said handing him a large envelope enclosed with the seal of legation i advise you to burn it and never refer to the matter again that night the ill-fated man took the train for london his heart consumed by hatred for the whole french nation together with a burning desire for vengeance he wired his wife to meet him at the station and for a long time debated with himself whether he should at once tell her the sickening truth in the end he decided that it was better to keep silent no sooner however had she seen him then her woman's instinct told her that he was laboring under some mental strain and he saw in a moment that to withhold from her his burning secret was impossible especially when she began to talk of the trip they had planned through france of course no trivial reason would satisfy her for his refusal to make this trip since they had been looking forward to it for years and yet it was impossible now for him to set foot on french soil so he finally told her the whole story she laughing and weeping in turn to her as to him it seemed incredible that such overwhelming disasters could have grown out of so small a cause and being a fluent french scholar she demanded a sight of the fatal piece of pasteboard in vain her husband tried to divert her by proposing a trip through italy she would consent to nothing until she had seen the mysterious card 
which burwell was now convinced he ought long ago to have destroyed after refusing for a while to let her see it he finally yielded but although he had learned to dread the consequences of showing that cursed card he was little prepared for what followed she read it turned pale gasped for breath and nearly fell to the floor i told you not to read it he said and then growing tender at the sight of her distress he took her hand in his and begged her to be calm at least tell me what the thing means he said we can bear it together you surely can trust me but she as if stung by rage pushed him from her and declared in such a tone as he had never heard from her before that never never again would she live with him you're a monster she exclaimed and those were the last words he heard from her lips failing utterly in all efforts at reconciliation the half-crazed man took the first steamer for new york having suffered in scarcely a fortnight more than in all his previous life his whole pleasure trip had been ruined he had failed to consummate important business arrangements and now he saw his home broken up and his happiness ruined during the voyage he scarcely left his stateroom but lay there prostrated with agony in this black despondency the one thing that sustained him was the thought of meeting his partner jack eveleth the friend of his boyhood the sharer of his success the bravest most loyal fellow in the world in the face of even the most damning circumstances he felt that eveleth's rugged common sense would evolve some way of escape from this hideous nightmare upon landing at new york he hardly waited for the gangplank to be lowered before he rushed on shore and grasped the hand of his partner who was waiting on the wharf jack was his first word i am in dreadful trouble and you are the only man in the world who can help me an hour later burwell sat at his friend's dinner-table talking over the situation eveleth was all kindness and several times as he listened to burwell's story his eyes filled with tears it does not seem possible richard he said that such things can be but i will stand by you we will fight it out together but we cannot strike in the dark let me see this card there's a damned thing burwell said throwing it on the table eveleth opened the envelope took out the card and fixed his eyes on the sprawling purple characters can you read it burwell asked excitedly perfectly his partner said next moment he turned pale and his voice broke then he clasped the tortured man's hand in his with a strong grip richard he said slowly if my only child had been brought here dead it would not have caused me more sorrow than this does you've brought me the worst news that one man could bring another his agitation and genuine suffering affected burwell like a death sentence speak man he cried do not spare me i can bear anything rather than this awful uncertainty tell me what the card means eveleth took a swallow of brandy and sat with head bent on his clasped hands no i can't do it there are some things a man must not do then he was silent again his brows knitted finally he said solemnly no i can't see any other way out of it we have been true to each other all our lives we have worked together and looked forward to never separating i would rather fail and die than see this happen but we have got to separate old friend we have got to separate they sat there talking until late into the night but nothing that burwell could do or say 
availed against his friend's decision there was nothing for it but that eveleth should buy his partner's share of the business or that burwell buy out the other the man was more than fair in the financial proposition he made he was generous as he always had been but his determination was inflexible the two must separate and they did with his old partner's desertion it seemed to burwell that the world was leagued against him it was only three weeks from the day on which he had received the mysterious card yet in that time he had lost all that he valued in the world wife friends and business what next to do with the fatal card was the sickening problem that now possessed him he dared not show it yet he dared not destroy it he loathed it yet he could not let it go from his possession upon returning to his house he locked the accursed thing away in his safe as if it had been a package of dynamite or a bottle of deadly poison yet not a day passed that he did not open the drawer where the thing was kept and scan with loathing the mysterious purple scrawl in desperation he finally made up his mind to take up the study of the language in which the hateful thing was written and still he dreaded the approach of the day when he should decipher its awful meaning one afternoon less than a week after his arrival in new york as he was crossing twenty-third street on the way to his french teacher he saw a carriage rolling up broadway in the carriage was a face that caught his attention like a flash as he looked again he recognized the woman who had been the cause of his undoing instantly he sprang into another cab and ordered the driver to follow after he found the house where she was living he called there several times but always received the same reply that she was too engaged to see any one next he was told that she was ill and on the following day the servant said she was much worse three physicians had been summoned in consultation he sought out one of these and told him it was a matter of life or death that he see this woman the doctor was a kindly man and promised to assist him through his influence it came about that on that very night burwell stood by the bedside of this mysterious woman she was beautiful still though her face was worn with illness do you recognize me he asked tremblingly as he leaned over the bed clutching in one hand an envelope containing the mysterious card do you remember seeing me at the folie bergere a month ago yes she murmured after a moment's study of his face and he noted with relief that she spoke english then for god's sake tell me what does it all mean he gasped quivering with excitement i gave you the card because i wanted you to to hear a terrible spasm of coughing shook her whole body and she fell back exhausted an agonizing despair tugged at burwell's heart frantically snatching the card from its envelope he held it close to the woman's face tell me tell me with a supreme effort the pale figure slowly raised itself on the pillow its fingers clutching at the counterpane then the sunken eyes fluttered forced themselves open and stared in stony amazement upon the fatal card while the trembling lips moved noiselessly as if in an attempt to speak as burwell choking with eagerness bent his head slowly to hers a suggestion of a smile flickered across the woman's face again the mouth quivered the man's head bent nearer and nearer to hers his eyes riveted upon the lips then as if to aid her in deciphering the mystery he turned his eyes to the card with a cry of horror he sprang to his feet 
his eyeballs starting from their sockets. Almost at the same moment the woman fell heavily upon the pillow. Every vestige of the writing had faded. The card was blank. The woman lay there, dead. <laughs>